everyone. Thank you for tuning in. This is Jay Lee's Corner. I am, of course, Jay Lee. And this is my review for The Have and The Have Nots Season 6. I don't know what episode this is, but it will be in the description. Um, so thanks for tuning in. I know I said I wouldn't do a review on my hat, but it's my hat. And my hair kept blowing, and I just wanted to put my hat on, so don't judge me. Um, But it won't be, in, you know... A lot that I'll be wearing this hat even though you know I like how my hair look when it's in a hat anywho so yeah as we know first things first if you have not done so already please take a moment and subscribe to my channel it does not cost you anything um, it just lets you know when I have new content available and when I have new videos up on my channel so please if you have a moment please make sure you subscribe 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 um also, you can like my videos, share my videos, um, and there's a comment section at the bottom of all YouTube videos where you can always leave a comment. So, please, if you have, haven't done before, leave a comment just to say hi, just to say I like your videos. I hate your, well, don't say you hate, because you know hate is a strong word. But, you know, a comment here and there won't hurt anyone. So, yeah, this episode of the Have and Have Nots. It was slow at first for me. The ending was pretty good. The ending was pretty, I guess, where it got good at. Um, But a couple of things got on my damn nerve in this episode. And the first thing that got on my goddamn nerve was Veronica's ass. I'm so sick of Veronica consistently having people's secrets. And she's always threatening to tell something. Or she's always threatening to do something with the information that she has. I just feel like I need her to have something else to do. Like, I need her. I get that she is the nemesis to everyone. That she is the evil ice queen to everyone. I get that's her character. But I need her character to have more something. Like, it's getting boring. I mean, it's getting boring. It's getting repetitive. It's getting um, lazy is what I'll say it's getting. It's getting lazy, Tyler. You know, fix it. Okay, fix this shit, Tyler. Because um, we see this scene starting off with Veronica talking to Justin in the stairwell. Because in the last episode, we see that she overheard Justin and Wyatt, Wyatt, Justin and Jeffrey having a conversation. So she walks up and she's like, oh, so you're married. So she's basically trying to question Justin to see what his relationship really is with Wyatt. Because as we know, Veronica does not like the fact that Wyatt is gay. Um, so, you know, that's the whole conversation that they're having. She then tries to insinuate that Justin sexually harassed Jeffrey. You know, she's like, I saw you put him into the stairwell. And, you know, I heard the conversation. And, you know, she said how she heard him say, you do things to me that my wife could never do. So, of course, she's asking if he's married. Does your wife know? That you got this man doing stuff to you that don't nobody else do. Um, Justin, as always, is playing stupid. Like, I don't know what, what you're talking about. I don't know what you thought you heard. I was talking to Jeffrey about when I arrested him before. And he's just playing like he, you know, he don't like no men's. This, even though we know that he like men's is on this show. And, you know, she's just threatening to basically go public She's going to tell his wife. She's going to have a press conference. You know, she's going to let everybody know Justin the cop is harassing this man. And, of course, we know Justin don't want anyone to have any kind of inkling that he is gay. Because in his head, he's not gay. I mean, his penis is real gay. Real, real gay. Because his penis in this show likes Jeffrey. So, something is gay. In his mind, though, he's not gay. Um, but, I was looking for my remote control, but it's on the side of my couch. Um, but, yeah, I'm hoping my TV does not on pause. Let me, let me pause my TV. Hold on. Okay, last time I had my TV on pause and the unpause it scared the shit out of me. Anywho, so, yeah, you know, Jeffrey... Justin is trying to act like he doesn't know what she's talking about. Um, he said, you know, my wife knows me. My wife knows I am not gay. So you should be worried about what she's going to say about you if you try to talk about her husband because my wife is actually a judge. And he brings up that, you know, his wife is actually the judge on one of Veronica's cases. And Veronica then says, how, you know, well, I'll, you know, put forth a motion to have her removed 
because of a conflict of interest. I should even be talking to you. And they're basically going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. What I can say is that um, Justin held his own. And he... May, he didn't bow down to Veronica. He didn't just be like, oh, okay, I'm going to do whatever it is you say. Because, of course, she's trying to get him to... I'm sorry, I'm calling my hands. I'm doing this. I didn't plan to have my hat on. Um, but she's probably... She's basically said to him, I need you to not be involved with my son. Don't be around my son. Don't talk to my son. Just leave my son be. And he kind of was like, you can't tell me who to talk to and interact with. And they're basically threatening each other. You know what I'm saying? They're kind of going back and forth. Um, her antics was a bit weird for me. She kept having these big crazy eyes. I'm not a fan of big crazy eyes. Even if that's what you're going for. And Veronica, of course, is a crazy bitch. So I guess that's what she was going for. Um, but she, I just feel like she in these streets is running wild with everybody's secrets. And I need somebody to just, you know, put, to tame her and calm her the fuck down. Or not even that, just give her something else to do. Like, or let her, it's just too, it's just, she's in too much, she's in too much shit. Okay? She's in too, I mean, she's, she's Benny's lawyer, she's Candace's lawyer, she's uh, Jeffrey's lawyer, you know, she's everybody's damn lawyer. She don't lawyer in town, and did we forget she wasn't even a practicing lawyer before. You know what I'm saying? So how does she all of a sudden become everybody got dang on lawyer all of a sudden? So, and my thing is, in real life, if Veronica was out here just fucking with people, somebody would have been to slap the piss out of Veronica. You know what I'm saying? I would have been, if I was Candace, I would have been slapped the dog shit out of uh, Veronica. Hell, if I was Hannah, I would have been slapped her ass too. So, I just think they need to just kind of reel her character in a little bit. Give her something else of, of, of worth to do. You know what I'm saying? I, it's just crazy. Go find the goddamn dang on DA who did. Now, why ain't nobody brought up the fact the DA is missing in the... Okay, let me not uh, get ahead of myself. Um, so, you know, they're basically just going back and forth. And he's saying, you know, don't threaten me. And she's saying, well, don't threaten me. And he's like, look, you don't want me threatened. It was just a whole back and forth situation. What I thought was bullshit, though, was how Veronica was like, don't nothing scare me. I don't get scared. Bitch, you a damn lie. Because when Catherine killed the damn DA, your ass was scared, down to the floor, shivering and quivering and all. You don't know what to do. You was running all around the house. And you can't say that nothing or no one scares you. Because Catherine put the fear of God or the devil, I don't know which one, in you when she killed that lady in front of your face. So, it didn't end with anything except she left out, he left out, and he's saying, don't you try me, and she's saying, don't you try me. So, we shall see who tries each other. Um, the next thing that we see is Jim trying to see why yet they end up. Jim and David see, um, Jeffrey in the hallway. So, of course, Jim is trying to figure out where's Wyatt. What is Wyatt doing here? Is he okay? He's playing the role of the concerned father. But we all know, Jim, your ass put uh, Wyatt in jail. And that's why he got raped. You did that to that boy. Nobody but you, Jim. That's what you did. Let me cut my boobs up before somebody be saying stuff. People be like, your boobs always out. I don't be trying to do that. I just kind of don't pay attention because I'm used to having boobs. Anyway. Anyway. Yeah, so Jim's trying to put, trying to play this concerned father. Um, and he's also concerned about Wyatt. And Jeffrey's kind of like, you know, you and Catherine are a trigger for him. So he doesn't really need to see y'all right now. He's trying to get healthy himself. Um, he's doing this for himself because we od the last time. It scared him. Now, mind you, it did scare him to do more drugs. Because he did a little bit more drugs. But, you know, I guess now he's scared straight to where he wants to get better. Um, so, Jim is basically like, you know, he's my son and I want to see him. And, you know, he's yelling at Wyatt and everything. And even David is trying to convince Wyatt, convince Jeffrey to tell Jim where Wyatt is. Um, because that's still his father. So, Jeffrey does eventually tell him what room they're in. And Jim, of course, apologizes for yelling to Jeffrey and gives him a hug and he runs off to go find Wyatt. Um, in the meantime, in between time, we see David and Jeffrey having a conversation. Jeffrey finally, 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 finally tells his dad 
that he is the one who killed Quincy. Now, see, I don't know why he didn't come to that a long time ago. Because your mama is batshit crazy. And if your mama is, is like, you know, basically blackmailing you with something, get your daddy to help you. You know your daddy is the same when he loves his son regardless of what you do or who you do or what you do it with. Um, you should have been told David what happened. But, you know, he does tell his father what happened, how he basically kind of blacked out, but that he is the one who killed Quincy, that he, you know, walked in on Quincy beating Candace, and when he tried to get, he hit him, and we tried to get him off of him, um, he then was trying to beat him up, and he's like, I basically blacked out, and when I came to, I had blood all over me, but he admitted that he was the one who killed Quincy. And then David is like, but y'all buried the body, the body in the backyard. That was just stupid. You know, Jeffrey admits that the reason they did that was because the neighbor across the street who had the camera, so they couldn't move the body. So basically, he just come clean to his father about, yeah, that's what my mom had on me on this time. And, you know, that's why I've been so stressed and blah, 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 blah. But David is, you know, coming in to save the day. He wants to save his son or help his son. Um, and he's like, you know, David does that. Jeffy does let David know that, you know, mom's going to try to get the case thrown out because the warrant that they had where they got the the warrant that they had for the house was in Candace's name. But at the time, the bank was the owner of the house. So that makes the warrant they had invalid, which means anything they found at that point in time cannot be cannot be evidence in court meaning the body there would be no body so there would be no murder and they won't be able to they wouldn't go to jail so Dave was like oh yeah she probably could do that but he like I'm gonna you know save the day basically and Dave is a sexy old man so let's hope he do say the day hey daddy um so that how that he told Wyatt to Wyatt damn it he did tell Jeffrey, you know, go home. You know, I'm going to handle this. I guess David forgot that basically Wyatt is home. Damn it, not Wyatt. That <laughs> Jeffrey is basically homeless. Because his mama took his dad's apartment and basically been forcing him to live at her damn house. So Jeffrey is like this a homeless child. You know, I don't know why David didn't tell him to go to his house. Oh, forgot. They house burned down. Um, They are homeless. Everybody homeless except Veronica. You know, Hannah and them homeless, Benny homeless, uh, Catherine just got her a house, um, David at a hotel. It's a lot of homeless rich people. Anywho, um, so yeah, he tells me to go get a hotel room and, you know, call the lady and we'll talk about it. Um, we see Jim visiting Wyatt as he's sleeping. It was very touching, you know, um... He's still a dad, and even as fucked up as Jim is, he do love his children. But Jim needs to understand that, you know, some of the bullshit that you put Wyatt through is the reason why he's still on drugs. Y'all enabled that boy his whole damn life, and that's why he is the way he is sometimes. I'm not saying that they're the reason he started drugs. I don't know because I don't know that boy like that. What I do know is you are, as they say, you are a trigger for him and his drugs. So it's cool to see that he's trying to let Wyatt heal himself and not interfere. You know, he doesn't wake Wyatt up. He doesn't do any of that. He just says, you know, you got this, son. And he does talk to the female doctor lady who's trying to help. And they exchange cards or whatever. I hope he'll sleep with that lady later. That's all I'm going to say about that. Um, Hannah's scene was very small in this episode. Hannah and Catherine. Um, you know, Hannah's woke. Catherine woke. Like, you know, we should get some food on you. Catherine, she don't want to eat. She ain't hungry. Her grandbaby just that. She's straight. Um, you know, Hannah's been up all night. The pill that Catherine gave her only worked for about an hour. So she's been up. Just, you know, up, up, up. Um, because, of course, she's traumatized. She's still hurt. She's still grieving. I completely understand that. Um, she tries to call Benny. Of course, Benny doesn't answer because Benny's in jail. Um, Mitch does answer when she calls. And he just say, hey, I need Benny to call me so we can get started on this funeral stuff and Mitch is like okay we see that Mitch is actually at the hotel getting the toy that Hannah asked Benny to get he's doing that because Benny was arrested um then it's the whole conversation between Catherine and Hannah where Hannah's saying like you know I can't afford a funeral I don't have any money um it's so hard and of course Catherine offers to help her um they also bring up how much Hannah was there for 
Catherine when her daughter died and how Kat, um, Hannah wasn't there financially but emotionally she was there for Catherine and Catherine is now being able to return the favor and I think that's a really good thing um so she does say you know I'm going to take care of the funeral don't you worry about this you know I got it don't worry about it don't worry about it don't worry about it um and that's basically the gist of that scene Catherine's trying to cook of course to get Hannah some food but Catherine can't cook and Catherine like I got the stove on you know so that was their whole scene um I call this person the black Barack Obama, basically because we know that's kind of what the character is modeled after. Um, so it's, his name is actually Charles. He's the person, he's the black guy who's running for president, might win president, that Candace is vetting or whatever. She's trying to deal with him in some capacity. But she's in the room next door to his and she hears his children. So she opens her little side door. Um, his kids end up opening their side door and they're like, hi. She's like, hi. So, you know, his kids meet her. It was a cute little scene. You know, it was very, you know, cute or whatever. The kids go off to school. And then, you know, Candace and Charles are having a conversation. She, of course, invites him over to her hotel room. Because all he got to do is walk through the door. Um, because they have adjoining rooms, um, which is not realistic when a person is running for president. That would never happen. Um, even though he's saying that he likes for his kids to have normalcy, normalcy would never e equate to having a stranger in the room next door. That just doesn't happen. Um, but this is TV. So, you know, they're having a conversation and it's kind of a back and forth thing. We see that he does say to her, you know, I have to be at a rally in an hour and a half. That just means we got about 45 minutes to have sex. Whenever someone you put, you're about to sleep with says to you, I got to be somewhere in this amount of time, they giving you a time frame, which means if I'm supposed to be somewhere in 30 minutes, we got 10 or 15 minutes to get it in, and then I got five minutes to clean my body and get to where I got to go. That's basically what he did. Um, so they're having the whole kind of back and forth thing, the kind of cat and mouse situation. Um, they talk... It was a cat and mouth situation. It was very enticing. He's a very sexy man. I don't recall him being cute and sexy when he was on last season. I probably just wasn't paying attention um, at the at this point in time. He has a nice body. Yes, he does. Yes, yes, he has a nice body. Um, and it seems he likes to be told what to do. Because when Candace is like, come in here, um, you know, take your clothes off get in the bed and wait for me he does what he's told so in some capacity he is a freaky dicky little presidential candidate um so they also had a little bit of a conversation and she was saying how he's so calm um despite the fact that she recorded him um he's calm about that and he told her like you know i'm basically like i think he's like a duck where a duck can be in the water and they're gliding oh so smoothly it's not like the water isn't fluttering or anything but underneath the water their feet are moving very fast meaning i'm calm on the surface but below i'm boiling you know don't 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 you get me pushed to that point um so they do whatever they do you know they do what they do and you know cut to a scene of benny being interrogated um, the part that I did not like about this was the cop is then saying, oh, you're not arrested. We asked you to come down here for questioning. Bitch, no, you didn't. What you lying for? And if I'm not arrested, I'm finna go. I don't... But of course they didn't let him go. They're still trying to talk to him and he's trying to get up to leave. And another person walks in and he's like, no, you have to sit down. And Bean's like, what? What do you want? We need your DNA. Like, man, I give y'all my DNA. Fucking, I don't know. Again, what I would have said is, I'm not saying shit until my lawyer gets here, bruh. That's what I would have said, and that's how I would have said it. I ain't saying shit till my lawyer get here, bruh. That's how I would have said it. Um, and if I'm not arrested, I'm leaving. You can't hold me here because you just, you just said I'm not arrested. Um, but when the other guy walks in and he's like, you know, we do need your DNA, he's like, oh, because we think you are a threat to, to national security with the presidential candidate. Bitch, what? Bitch, who? That threw me off. So I'm not so he was arrested because he was arrested because of Quincy's murder, who was just a regular drug dealer or guy. 
he was then brought in for that. Then you tell him he wasn't arrested. Then somebody come in saying you need my DNA for because I'm a threat to national security of a pres presidential candidate. I don't know no presidential candidate, bro. I don't even know who running. And I'm just like, what the fuck? Where did that come from? I was just oh so confused. And he's like, you can either give them to us voluntarily or we can force you to do it. I would still say I ain't doing shit to my lawyer. Get here, bro. That's what I would have said. But that's just me. Um, so he, they basically make Benny sit there. We, I, that scene threw me for a loop. So, cut back to Candace and uh, Charles, presidential candidate, in the bed. So they're in the bed after they didn't had sex and made good love and all the good stuff. And he's saying to her, because now she's taking pictures, she's taking bed selfies. She's like, chick, quick, quick. Or oh, whatever. He's like, you know, stop doing that. And she's like, what? I take selfies all the time. He's trying to get her to be serious. And she's like, why are you so serious? Like, what are you talking about? You know, I think you're a regular person. Yes, you're going, you're going to be president, but I still think you're a regular. She's like, if I cut you, you would still bleed like you're a human like anybody else. He got serious. You know, when he's like, you know, you can't blackmail me. Whatever you have on me, you need to release it now and leave it at that. And she's like, what? I'm not trying to blackmail you. I'm not. And then he then says, who you call this person? Vincent, I need you. And she's like, who the fuck is Vincent? Man, the Secret Service busting the room. Like, they had keys to everything. They had a key to hit. They came in through her little secret door. Her friend. They came from everywhere. And she's like, what's going on? I guess Vincent is his cult. I guess all this time. And I'm like, how they hear him? Like, is her room bugged too? Because he was naked. Maybe he had a watch on. That's always recording what's being said. I don't know. All I know was I was wondering how the fuck they heard him say, Vincent, I need you. I was looking for the goddamn gun microphone. I don't know. What, how, I don't know. I don't even know. Anywho, the Secret Service bus in, and then they, didn't, they then tell Candace, you are being accused of being a terrorist. You know, if something is on your computer. It's like, that's not even my computer. I wouldn't have said that, though, but that just sounds suspect. But how is she a fucking, so she a terrier, terrorist, and Benny is wanted the DNA for national security. And that's how it went off. I'm just oh so confused. And then... Charles said, I'm not the motherfucker to play with. Well, go go ahead, Charles. Don't be the motherfucker to play with. Because I was like, okay, he looks serious now. That's how it went off. I'm confused. I don't know what's going on. I'm assuming he, one, has to know who she is. But I said that from day one. After, after they stepped together the first time, I'm pretty sure he had her investigated. You all on the news, Candace. All on the news. Like, everywhere on the news. And I kept saying before, like, it would be crazy if he didn't know who she was, considering the fact that he's running for president. Like, you would have to know who she is. And so I'm hoping that that was a way to where they did it to he's fucking with her, to let her know he ain't the one to motherfucking play with. Because that's what he said. I'm not the motherfucker to play these games with, is what he said. He looked sexy while doing it. He was looking so serious and everything. So, I mean, I'm interested to see the next episode it does look good um so yeah i mean it was a good episode i you know i liked it so <laughs> thanks for tuning in this is my review for the have and have nots i still don't remember which episode it is i think it's like four if i'm not mistaken um subscribe to my channel if you have not already like my video put a comment below share my video until next time people peace